if we have some of our content uh, become more popular, get more engagement, likes, or, or comments, how do we know which one is a better filtering device for our ideal audience versus which ones are more getting kind of more shallower engagement, um, mass audience that a lot of whom aren't the right thing for us. So let me just first explain the context of this. Why is this even a question? Why is this needed? Well, it's because when we put content out there, when we write things, articles, blog posts, or make videos, or record podcast episodes, or put photos, or whatever, when we put content out there, we are either attracting our most ideal audience, or we're attracting people who thought our you know, inspirational quote was inspirational, or nice picture of a flower, and they didn't even read our caption. You see what I mean? So it's like, it, it's, it's, and, and the more you say, well, what's, what's wrong with that? Why can't we just attract whoever is attracted to us with our content? Well, the reason is over time, as you start posting about your services and your offerings and your products, if your audience is very diluted with a lot of mainstream sort of like mass audience that just likes your inspirational quotes or likes the pictures of your flowers or whatever, likes the pictures of your dogs and cats and, you know, you know, mountains or whatever, then you when you when you post your service or your offer those posts are going to be so uh low low engagement that it it's essentially buried for most almost all your followers you see this is a problem and also if you decide to start running ads which i do and i recommend and i do this all the time um i run facebook instagram ads and linkedin ads at this time i spend about a thousand dollars a month running ads on these three platforms. Um, as a solopreneur, that's a lot, but it's worth it. It's really worth it. But when you start running ads, you're going to be running ads to your warm audience, people who have already engaged in, in, in the past year, and you'll run ads to cool audience, people who don't know you yet. And the problem is when you start running ads to your warm audience, if you have a, a large or if you have a lot of people in your warm audience who are kind of shallow engagers, who don't really get you, who don't really aren't the right fit for your services, but they like your inspirational quotes or they like your you know, entertaining dance videos or something like that, then you, you pay a lot for your warm audience ads because you have to pay money to reach the warm people, all of most of whom are not right for you. So this is why I, if you, if you continue learning my marketing strategy, I am not, I am not about building uh, you know, 100K audience, 100,000 person audience or million person audience. I think that's foolish, in my opinion. For most of us who are solopreneurs, right? Who, who we, we can't serve 10,000 people at the same time. We can't even serve 100 people at the same time. If you suddenly you got 100 inquiries today, you'd be overwhelmed. You'd be like, oh my gosh, how do I, how do I respond to these people, right? I mean, you'd be happy to get maybe even 10, even 10 inquiries and then a day you'd be, you'd be like, you know, sleepless tonight because you'd be like, oh gosh, did I respond correctly? Did I get to everybody, right? So we solopreneurs need to grow more gradually rather than go in instant fame, success or whatever. Um, I think it's foolish and it burns out and all that stuff. So this is why when we post content out there, we need to think about what is more filtering content. I call it filtering content, which is like content that requires some base understanding or, or, or values alignment or some core assumption that you and they both believe in order for that content to be really appreciated or, or understood and engaged with. So this is why um, you'll notice what I do. If you look at my content stuff, I don't post general inspirational quotes or pictures of my you know, beautiful cat and dog. I could. Of course I could, and I get, could get tons of likes you know, for, for that stuff, but I know I'm just going to be increasing my warm audience cost over time, and I'm going to be decreasing the uh, algorithm, way decreasing the algorithm whenever I post my offers. But you'll, you'll notice what I do is I post relatively long articles on social media, like longer than they should be, right, for social media, right? It's not a quote. It's like paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, and it's, it's content that's not mass market content. It's not easily understandable by just someone off the street, even someone you know smart or whatever off the street. Some, some, even someone compassion, caring, similar values as me. They, 
they're still not going to rewrite for my content if they're not my right person. I, I tend to post stuff like that, okay? And, and number two, my content's not that entertaining. Like my articles are just, there's no pictures or, you know, it's just words after words, after words, after words. I usually Instagram swiping or, or Facebook scrolling, just words after words after words. And my videos are not that entertaining. I'm not that good of a dancer. I, I know you disagree with me, but I'm not that good of a dancer. So I can't make Instagram reels pointing to boxes that aren't there. Um, you know, and, and so, but I don't want to attract that many people even though I'm, I'm beautifully handsome uh, and I'm just a fantastic dancer and so sexy, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, it's like, I don't mind almost being boring on video because then I, I attract only the people who resonate with my energy signature, who say, even though this guy is not super handsome and super sexy uh, of a dancer, there's something about him that connects on a deep level. And I want to, keep listening to this or I went good so I tracked patient people you'll notice in my group programs um some the bet the best people my 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 members always say you got you have to, you attract the best people <laughs> those of you who are here right now you know live the best people really well I work at it I work at it by being boring and by not by not, not I don't try to be boring but I definitely don't try to be attractive right so so Back to the original question. Well, then, George, let's say several of your pieces goes, you know, viral or gets more engagement. How do you know which one is? Well, I, I've already given you some of the answer for that. It's like, yeah, probably shouldn't post pictures of your cats and dogs unless you're an animal communicator, right? You're an animal communicator or you are a pet trainer or something related. You know, other than that, be careful, especially on your business pages and things. You're going to just increase your warm ad costs by posting cute, cute photos. Um, even of yourself, right? Um, all of you are prettier than me. So just by posting yourself, you're going to get tons of likes and all that stuff. And, and I don't notice, well, I mean, okay, fine. I, I, uh, if, if, I, if I were more handsome, I, I probably wouldn't post as many pictures of myself. I don't really post it. I, I post my, my uh, I'm lazy. So my, my video thumbnails do have a picture of me. Like I made the video, but it's partly like the energy signature match. It's like just a picture of me creates a bit of an energy signature match. Um, but they have to watch the video because it's not just a nice picture of me, you know. So, um, so how do we know if two pieces do well, which one is more of a filtering? Well, back to the original thing that I just said is which of these two pieces has more of a core assumption that you share with the ideal reader, viewer, audience, client, customer that the mainstream doesn't share or doesn't understand? Uh, let me say that again. What is a core assumption for, for this piece, these pieces of content? What's this piece of this article that you've written, or this video you've made? What is a core assumption in that video that only the ideal client would understand or say yes, hell yeah, to? Whereas the mainstream might say, I don't get it or I don't agree with you. You see, it's good to have people not agree with you if. Your ideal client, customer, viewer, kindred spirit, friend says, hell yeah, so finally someone said it or what a relief, you know, or someone put into words what I was feeling but couldn't put into words. But in the mainstream person, right, the person who's not your ideal client would just go over their head. It would, they wouldn't get it. So, so, so you are always, I'm always asking that question, like, hmm, which of these pieces should I run an ad on? Well, I'm going to run the ad on the piece that is more. Yeah, sure. Of, of all available pieces, I'm going to choose the pieces to, to pay money to run an ad to distribute that are more engaging for sure. But then of the engaging ones, which one has more of the core assumption that it's almost like like a secret handshake or a secret wink that, you know, or or like, a my God, if I got my ideal person in the room, we would have we would like, oh, my God. Yeah, you feel that, too. Or, oh, my God, you went through that, too. Or, wow, you. You know, we we really like oh, you, you 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 are into this too. Whereas the mainstream person would be like, it's not a cute dog, not a cute cat. <laughs> Swipe, you know, continue on, right? So, I hope this helps. And um, yeah, any any comments and questions, you can always comment below. Thank you.